a lot of people feel as though hell is not real and it does not exist is hell real is this place a true genuine authentic place where people will go let's talk about this let's get into this what is hell hell is a place of torment second peter 2 verse 4 is very clear god did not spare even the angels when they sinned he threw them into hell in gloomy caves revelations 19 20 says both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Jude 1 verse 7 says, Those cities were destroyed by fire and are warning of the eternal fire that will punish all who are evil. Wow. In the Bible, the rich man also died and was buried and his soul went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Lazarus in the far distance with Abraham. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. Please pity me, water, and cool my tongue. So clearly he's letting us know that this place, hell, is a place of torment, a place of discomfort. You're not going to be comfortable. It's not gonna, you're not going to have a warm, fuzzy feeling. No, it's very uncomfortable. Our imaginations cannot even fully comprehend how horrible hell is. Here on earth, we tend to think in time spans that have a beginning and an end. There will be no end in hell. There will be no end. It will go on and on and on and on for all eternity. This is not something that I've said. This is something in scripture. It's very clear. So now, who will be sent to hell? Who will? Anyone, according to Revelations 2015, anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So basically, your name has to be in this particular book. And the only way that your name can be in this book of life is by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, that there is a way of escape. Everyone does not need to go to heaven. All we must do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and, be, and become a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Follow him. So now, let's get, into, let's get into a little bit more deeper. Jude 1, verse 15. He will bring the people of the world to judgment. He will convict the ungodly of all the evil things they have done in rebellion and all the insults that godless sinners have spoken against him. My God, the Bible even goes on to say that hell was made for Satan and all of his angels and all of his demons. Amen. And the Bible is very clear. And all those who forget God. Wow. Many people will be surprised on Judgment Day to find that living a good life and being successful did not secure their place in heaven because many good people will end up in hell. It's not based on your goodness. The Bible is very clear in Ephesians 2. We are saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah. We're saved by grace. We're not saved by our merits. We're not saved by our goodness and the good things that we do. No, a lot, like as I, like as I said, many good people will be lost. So it's not about you being good in society and uh, not having a, a criminal record uh, and, but, and feel as though, well, I'm rich. I'm, 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 not, I'm not a menace to society. I'm successful. I'm blessed. But believe it or not, many of these individuals will be lost. Why? Because one must be saved through grace by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And what happens when you understand that we're not saved by uh, by works, but we're saved by grace. What does God do? We see in the same chapter in Ephesians 2 that the Bible says we become his workmanship created unto good works. Now the works and the good works are two totally different things. Works is you attempting to get or you attempting to accomplish something to uh, 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 
get God's attention to get into heaven. No, Jesus already did that. He died on the cross. As a matter of fact, God presented his own sacrifice. At one time, the people had to bring their own sacrifices. But no, 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 there's no need to do that. We don't have to bring any sacrifices. We just have to accept the sacrifice of God, who is his son, Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. How in the world can you top that? That is so powerful when you understand that I am saved, not by me bringing my own sacrifices, but understanding that God has presented his own sacrifice unto himself, who is his son. John 3, 6, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The 17th verse says, for God sent not his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him, Jesus Christ, might be saved. So now is there hope? Yes, there is a hope. And that hope is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we become his workmanship created unto good works. So then it must be now proof that God is working in my life. And when God is working in my life, I, people will begin to see my good works, not my works, but my good works, amen, unto the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, the Bible is so very clear. The Bible says, let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Not works, but good works. Because once again, there must be proof, hallelujah, that God is working in my life. If God, divinity, is doing anything in my life, there's got to be some kind of proof, my God, that he's working in my life. And that's a changed life, a transformed life. Amen. For the glory of God, a one who desires to follow Jesus Christ. Jesus said, anyone who desires to follow after me must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Glory be to God. Through Jesus Christ, you can be saved from hell's fire.